my name is Jeff Hammond. I work for Intel uh, in the HPC organization. Um, I'm going to try to give a short and high level talk. Um, I am a big fan of Slack and I am on the nurse Slack every day. So if you have one more details, I'll put it there so that it's in writing and then it'll be saved forever. It's maybe easier than doing verbal stuff. Um, but hopefully there's time. So I'm going to talk about SQL and DPC++ and I will explain what the difference is. Um, SQL is this chrono standard and DPC++ is the Intel implementation. Uh, and I have details on this. And I'm focused on GPUs, although uh, neither of these things are specific to GPUs, and I'll show more on that later. So, um, you know, I, I, I used to be a DOE. I've been around for a little while. Um, and one thing that I find particularly interesting about Exascale uh, system architecture, you know, a, 10 years ago, give or take, you know, there was this two swim lanes. One of them was sort of blue jean like and the other was basically NVIDIA like. Uh, and that's that's sort of how the world was uh, oriented. And we've seen we've done a quite a bit of a rotation uh, in some respects. Uh, you know, there's uh, not really a many core CPU, and al although that's debatable because the, the CPUs in both of these systems will have dozens of cores. Uh, but it's not many core in a blue gene uh, Xeon Phi sense. And of course, neither of the exascale systems uh, at Oak Ridge and Oak, or Argonne are slated to have NVIDIA GPUs, although of course Perlmutter will uh, have them and other sites will as well. So, uh, you know, this is, this is actually kind of a pleasant surprise uh, for those of us who have been advocating for standards and portable, portable programming, because uh, if you were planning to, uh, run your exascale application on a many core CPU or an NVIDIA GPU using something that was uh, vendor specific, uh, you are probably sad now. Um, but if you were focused on something that uh, ran on a lot of different machines uh, like Cocos or OpenMP, uh, then you're probably uh, fairly happy right now. So I'm gonna talk about uh, another option besides Cocos and OpenMP for uh, portability on some of these systems. Um, so Sickle, uh, like I said, is a chrono standard. There is already an ecosystem for it. There are three different implementations that are relevant to GPUs. Uh, so the first one of, you know, I'll mention is, is Intel's Data Parallel C++ compiler. Uh, it is based on Clang LLVM. There's an open source version on GitHub. The product we ship in one API is derived from that open source. Uh, quite directly, there's, you know, the differences are basically different Git hashes and compile on different days of the week. Um, we have some GPU extensions, although um, actually as of literally today, um, all but all of our GPU extensions are actually part of the SQL 2020 provisional standard that was uh, announced today. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So the DPC++ compiler supports Intel GPUs, CPUs, and FPGAs. Obviously, we implemented that. Um, CodePlay, which is a company in Edinburgh, uh, contributed support for NVIDIA, but that's available in the open source version. You have to build it yourself for CUDA licensing reasons, nothing we can do anything about. Um, there's also CodePlay's Compute CPP product, which is a different implementation than Intel's. They're both based on Clang LLVM, uh, but they are, di they are different. Um, and that's great because as folks know, if you've ever debugged a, a Clang bug or a vendor compiler bug, it's wonderful to compare it to GCC and know that, you know, there's two different code paths and if they both give the same answer, then maybe your code is wrong. And if they give different answers, then maybe one of the compilers is wrong. Um, so CodePlay's compiler supports uh, OpenCL Spear V devices, of which there are a few, and I'll show that on a later slide. Um, their compiler supports our GPUs, among others. Um, and they also have a PTX backend uh, for NVIDIA. So there are both of these first two support um, both NVIDIA and Intel uh, and any other device that supports Spear V and OpenCL, uh, which is unfortunately not that many. Um, Heidelberg uh, University produces something called HipSickle. This is um, by a fantastic uh, young fellow named uh, Axel Alpe, and it's based on Clang LLVM and it's based on CUDA Clang, and it's related to, or it uses the same code as HIP, 
um, which is in the name, obviously. Uh, so HipSickle is has a CPU backend that uses OpenMP, an NVIDIA backend using CUDA Clang, and an AMD backend using the HIP Rockham stack. So you see here, uh, obviously, all the GPUs um, of interest and actually ARM GPUs are supported. Not that that's particularly relevant unless you're going to do Exascale on your cell phone. Um, but uh, there's a nice healthy ecosystem of support for a lot of GPUs. There's also a compiler called Tricycle, developed by uh, somebody at uh, Xilinx Research, that supports um, not GPUs. So, but you can look up the details. It, I use it on my laptop all the time. I, I want to talk about performance portability um, first, and so I'm going to cite two different uh, results from iWACL. Um, by researchers, not Intel. Um, that makes it really easy to cite third parties when we compare vendors, uh, makes my life easier. So you can see in the link here, um, there's, there's YouTube videos, there's the PDF online, it was free last time I checked, um, and the code is online. So you have full freedom to explore, reproduce, et cetera. Um, and you can see here on the right, this is just the, the Babel stream triad excerpt from the paper. They had some other numbers but stream, is, uh, stream Triad is so well known, I figured I'd cite that one. And you can see here, starting from the right, on the AMD GPU, you can see that which, which generation, et cetera, in the paper for details. But on the AMD GPU, you see negligible difference between OpenCL, Sickle, and HIP. Um, you can see on NVIDIA, um, small difference, you know, 5% um, from Sickle relative to OpenCL and CUDA. Um, I don't know all the details, you know, th there are occasionally runtime and code generations differences and sometimes you can soften the, soften the differences with, with minor tweaks if, you're, if you know how the tools work. Um, on the Intel device, you can see Sickle and OpenCL are essentially identical and that's, they're ba that basically they're the same, they're the same implementation behind the scenes, it's just a, uh, Sickle's a prettier front end, um, as I'll show later. Um, the scale here is, you know, notice it's not zero, it's 60. Um, so you see there's a 25% difference on Xeon. Uh, this is a compiler bug, basically. Um, we know about it. It'll be fixed at some point. It, it has to do with the OpenCL compiler doing code gen differently than the OpenMP compiler, uh, not something intrinsic to the programming model. And I suspect that one of the other SQL compilers for Xeon um, would not have this issue. So this right here, you know, if you care about memory bandwidth, it's nice to know that uh, you can get, um, you know, very very close to performance portability and bandwidth um, with with a bunch of different programming models. So this is uh, another paper from iWACL about a month or two ago. Um, this is from Argon by uh, Brian Homerding uh, and John Tram. They have results with Roger Perf, and I think it was. Um, the excess bench, I think, was in there. Again, it's all online. You can uh, you can grab all of it. Um, and I won't try to go through all the details because they're in the paper. But Raja Perf is sort of a, um, a suite of kernels uh, that are relevant to the NNSA multiphysics uh, workload. And you know, hydrodynamics um, also includes some simple stuff, some complicated stuff, um, a variety of different kernels. And what, one thing that I think is interesting about this. And I don't even remember which is positive and negative on the red and blue with sickle relative to CUDA. But you see, it turns out for reasons that um, one would have to diagnose with assembly reading. Um, but you know, you see winners and losers on 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 both cases. So it's not you know monotonically CUDA always wins and you always pay a price with sickle. Um, obviously, I'm sure somebody in Nvidia could make make CUDA always beat sickle if if they play around. Uh, with with the you know tuning the kernels, there are some differences in how the stores are generated. I think in some of these kernels, but this is another example where you can get you know modest performance portability uh, with with interesting code uh, using Sickle uh, on a GPU. So um, talking about the different uh, languages. So what is Data Parallel C++? So this is, this is the Intel compiler Im implementation, including some extensions. Um, it's based on Sickle 2020, which, I, like I said, was just released today. Um, so Sickle 1.2.1 is the thing that's been around for a while. It's, it, that's what's broadly implemented. 
Um, today, Sickle 2020 has supported um, approximately all of it. I don't know the exact details by Intel. Uh, CodePlay is uh, getting there. I don't know the full feature compliance. Um, they may do a new release and then be, be up to date in, in a couple of days. Um, but you know, we had these, these extensions on top of Sickle 121 for most of the last year. Uh, but per our commitment uh, to the community, we, we tried to standardize all of them. And, and we were successful with all the GPU extensions and the extension that didn't make it is related to FPGAs. And I don't know that it was intended to go upstream and was rejected or not. Um, but uh, you know, we expect the standard compliance SQL code to always be sufficient on Intel GPUs, but we'll add extensions uh, when users need them. For example, one of the extensions we, we submitted to SQL 2020 called U USM, which is Unified Shared Memory, same name as OpenMP5. Um, that's I'll show later. Is basically gives you malloc and pointers, and we did that because our our friends in DOE working on Cocos, etc., said, "Well, we we need pointers. We need we need uh, you know CUDA style memory management in order to be compatible with our design, um, and that made sense, and it made sense to the Sickle community. So that now that's standardized. And you know, in our case, all of our extensions." Uh, both the documentation and the implementation are available on GitHub. There's nothing proprietary about them. Anybody can re-implement them, um, and anybody can port the compiler to any other device. So this is, it's, you know, it's open in, in all the different degrees of openness. Obviously, we want to have everything in Kronos, but we're also get, uh, you know, open in the, in the sense of, hey, it's on GitHub. Uh, you can see what we're doing. So why Sickle? Um, so OpenCL is, has been sort of the, the portable open standard for GPUs and other devices for a long time. Um, and there are some good things about OpenCL. Uh, it's, it's portable, and that makes it better than a lot of other things out there. Um, but it's, it's got some warts. Uh, people often complain that it's, it's too verbose. Um, it's maybe, you know, the difference between MPI and uh, UPC or Co-Ray Fortran. Um, people don't seem to mind MPI, but they, they minded OpenCL for whatever reason. But, but the big reason that OpenCL was sort of not the right place to go is that OpenCL does not have holistic um, C++ support, uh, and modern C++ is really an essential, essential thing for, for modern programming, and we, you know, we know NVIDIA is very strong on C++. Uh, stuff and and you know we're, we're big fans and there's a parallel STL so there's all this C++ stuff going on out there and and it really was important to to make sure that C++ was was a you know first class citizen uh, in this model um, and so you know Sickle's based on modern C++ build it, first spec was based on C++ 11 uh, it's now based on C++ 17 so it includes all the good stuff um, you know CTAD and all those other fancy acronyms that people like. Um, you know, if you like TBB or you like uh, C++ STL, then Sickle has a lot of the same concepts there. And so you can, you know, it becomes a natural thing to port over. I will also say um, Sickle is, the, the closest thing to Sickle I've ever found is, is Cocos. So if you're comfortable with Cocos, um, you'll find, I think Sickle will be quite comfortable as well. Um, one of the ways I discovered Sickle before Intel was doing it was actually as part of a sort of, uh, cross-industry analysis of modern C++ models of which, you know, Cocos, Rajas, TBB, PSTL, Sickle, they all, they all sort of showed up as, um, as, as interesting things that the people might be wanting to use. Um, and, and, you know, Sickle is really the first standardized programming model to, to take on heterogeneous programming with modern C++. You know, Cocos, Cocos is certainly open. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, but, you know, Cocos has a different has a different sort of you know notion of openness than 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 Kronos does, um, and and there are there are pros and cons of each, but but we wanted to make sure we were building off of an industry standard that that would be widely implementable when we were doing our GPU software program. So this is the ecosystem. This is pulled off of the Kronos website, um, showing all the different implementations and all the different devices, and you can see. You know, depending on depending on drivers and whatnot, pretty much everything is here. Um, you know, all the CPUs because of LLVM, um, all the GPUs that I know about, including ARM and whatever PowerVR is. I think that's a GPU. Um, 
I, I haven't personally verified anything with Xilinx, but I have run, you know, our SQL compiler on um, our FPGAs, and I know that works. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much everything, and this is cool uh, to me. Um, if you look at all the standards out there, any programming language, any programming model for accelerators, um, SQL actually has the most device support of anything that exists. Um, you know, OpenMP and OpenACC do not support FPGAs. Um, and there are, of course, other, other software models that, that, that are supported on a subset of these things. Um, if, if, you, if you know of anything that supports more hardware than Sickle, um, please do let me know. I'd be curious to know about it. So um, I'm going to go real quick through some syntax. Um, what's, what's my time? I, I, my timer didn't start at zero, so I don't know how far I'm in. Uh, so you're about 16 minutes in, if you can wrap up pretty quick. Okay, um, I'll go fast. Thank you. Um, so I'm not going to belabor this. I'm just going to show OpenCL, verbose, tedious, bad. Um, sickle, same, same level of expressiveness, still a little bit verbose. Um, this is Sickle 2020, so you get USM, you eliminate a lot of syntactic bloat. Um, this, is, this is pretty nice. Um, and then, but there's one thing here you might want to flatten out, and that's this, which is, this is currently not standardized, uh, but it's literally just syntactic sugar in a header file. Um, and the thing is, if you look at this and you compare this to, you know, something else out there like Cocos, um, you know, the syntactic expressiveness is, is, is pretty much there. Um, one thing that's nice is it's fully asynchronous. It's not always available in other models. Um, you can see the Coco Slack for details on that. And I may have used too many characters here because I, I, I'm not the best C++ programmer. Um, and all this stuff, I can give example code anytime that a lot of this stuff is on GitHub somewhere. So, um, yep, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so uh, we had a um, comment there uh, in the chat, um, which was about uh, the lack of Fortran support, and um, I suppose we're w uh, wondering if you could comment on that and whether you think that. Uh... Yeah. Um, so, first thing is, uh, I I love Fortran. I've written a lot of Fortran in my life in NWCAM. Uh, we believe Intel, you know, that OpenMP is is a fantastic solution for Fortran programmers as well as. Um, you know, C, C99 purists and C++03 programmers. Um, and, you know, we're supporting OpenMP on our GPUs. I just didn't talk about that here because I had 15 minutes. Um, so uh, that's option one is use OpenMP. Uh, the second option is interlanguage programming. So they're, you know, using a modern C++ API from within Fortran, um, requires some care, but it's no different than what one would do with Cocos. Uh, the, the fact is the Fortran, compile, Fortran language and compiler infrastructure doesn't let you glue stuff onto the language the way C++ does, um, but that's why we have OpenMP. So, um, you know, I have actually a talk um, on the merits one way or the other of OpenMP and DPC++ for Fortran applications in it, um, which one is a priority for people will depend sort of on what their what their comfort level is and what their requirements are. But um, I think the the standard answer would be if you have a Fortran application, um, please keep using Fortran and use OpenMP for GPUs effectively, and and you'll be happy. Okay. And um, one other question before we go to uh, to the break, uh, which was a comment about that. There was OpenACC support for FPGAs. Again, I'm not sure whether that's necessarily a, a question you have an answer for, but um, I, sure. I I don't know which compiler it is. I I I guess put put a link in it and I, I'll download it and see if it works on uh, Altera products. 